Hello everyone, welcome to the third and final assembly video for my 30 pound combat robot, Crippling Depression. In this video I'm going to finish off the robot by assembling the, eh, I guess the outer frame um, that is consisting of the outer panels and also the top, bottom, and just kind of finishing everything off and then putting on the weapon. Unfortunately, as with the last video, I lost all the original audio on this, so I'm trying to narrate it kind of after the fact. So if there is something that looks kind of weird, just you know, post down below in the comments and I'll see if I can answer your question. What we're looking at here are all the external plates. These are all CNC machined on my Tormach. Um, it is 6061 aluminum, roughly 3 8 to half inch, somewhere around there, depending on the thickness. I'll go into more of the details in the overview. The coating on the outside is Linex, which is essentially a truck bed liner. It is a polyurea coating that basically cures and forms this quote unquote impenetrable coating and it fared pretty well in combat. I'll go into that when I do the kind of the post-combat overview of it, but it worked out pretty well. And here we have the top and bottom panels. These are just spray painted. Uh, these were water jet cut and this is grade 5 titanium. And I believe both the top and the bottom were 40 thou thickness. So these are actually you know relatively thin, but the grade 5 titanium is pretty darn tough. These right here are the support rails that go on the side to support the top and bottom armor. And then these um, plastic pieces are basically these uh, 3D printed wheel cups that basically just protect the drive motors and protect some of the wires from getting into them. The first thing I'm doing here is attaching these um, little angle supports to the left and the right panels. If you look really closely, you can see that everything's pretty well labeled. I have, you know, left and then I have an arrow pointing up. And so these little um, angle pieces were kind of a, a bit of an afterthought, I guess. But they um, basically just go on the left and right side to support the armor because otherwise the top and bottom armor were just kind of sag there in the middle. And these are just screwed directly into the left and right plates. And I actually didn't have any issues with these. Um, I was kind of worried that they might um, break or the screws would shear off, but I actually didn't have any issues with this. Okay, now that the armor supports are on, it's time to actually connect the outer plates through the drive block and then into the inner frame. And this is done on each side with four 1032 screws. And the 1032 screws are like, I wanna say three and a half inches long, and they go through the drive block and then into that inner frame piece. And so, of course, everything here is Loctite. I think that kind of goes without saying. I'm using thread locker on everything. Um, but yeah, you basically have those outer pieces going through the drive blocks and then connecting on the inside. And I'm doing this um, relatively loosely right now because when the other panels go on, you kind of have to tighten everything in order to make sure it all fits right. Just a quick note before we get too much further in this video, I won't be including any of the electrical for this build in this assembly video. I'm going to do a separate video later on that is just for the electrical. So the assembly that you're seeing, all three of these videos, is just for the mechanical assembly alone. There is uh, no electrical being covered here. Okay, so now it's time to add the front and the back panels. The front and back panels are a little bit beefier than the side panels. I think the actual overall thickness is about eh, maybe five-eighths of an inch. You do see a lot of pocketing in them just, you know, to save some weight. After this um, whole thing was complete, I actually weighed the whole thing and then filled in with epoxy those little triangles, those little cutouts, to actually make the exact weight. So they're actually kind of a weight savings and also a weight adjustment method, but more on that in the full kind of teardown and overview. The front and the back panels connect in two different places. They connect not only on the inside to those inner frame rails, but then they also have screws on the outside that couple them or connect them to those outer panels that I just installed earlier. So each one of these front and rear panels, each one actually has eight screws, or I think they're 1032s, eight 1032 screws holding them in place.
This is one of the kind of trickier parts of the build. And the main reason is, is that it's um, you know, kind of a chicken and egg situation. The panels all fit together so close and so tight, they kind of have to do it in a certain order. So the left and the right panels go on first, but you can't really tighten those down. The drive blocks are really squishy because it's you know, UHMW. So if you tighten the left and right panels too much, then it doesn't allow enough room for the front and the rear panels to fit in. But the front and rear panels kind of have to line up to the rest of it. So you kind of have to do everything loosely and then just go and tighten them one by one and make sure everything still kind of fits and lines up. So it just takes a little bit of time to kind of go through and get everything fully tightened. Okay, so now that the majority of the frame is together, it's time to kind of put in those little wheel cups. Once again, these were 3D printed and they actually go on from the underside. They actually rest against the um, bottom armor and there's just a couple of screws that actually screw these into uh, directly into the gear boxes from the bottom. It's probably a good time to point out the um, color theme of this robot. I try to keep everything as neutral or black as possible and um, doing this all over again uh, which I might do for the next version of this is I'd really like to paint or powder coat all of the internal frames to be black as well. It'd be really cool to have it just 100% black. Yay, it's finally time for the weapon assembly. The weapon assembly is a little tricky, but not too bad. Basically, the tapered roller bearing goes down inside the frame. Um, you can see I already kind of have the hub on there, which I need to take off because it kind of goes on there later. And so the hub just kind of sits down inside there. It takes a little bit to get the um, belt on there, but not too bad. This is a titanium spacer. It was actually cut at the exact same time as the top and bottom frame. It's the same material. And then the uh, weapon itself just kind of gets dropped down through. And um, I kind of made a mistake here because the armor needs to go on first. So the armor actually goes on and then the weapon goes on after that. And if you look really closely, you can tell that the um, weapon hub there and the armor are almost exactly the same um, plane or the same level. Um, they're pretty much exactly at the same height. And so that little spacer, which is a 40 thou thickness spacer, brings the weapon just above the frame. So that is kind of how close everything is here. There's just no space in between the weapon and the bottom armor and frame of the robot. In fact, it's actually so close that those two screws up front are actually countersunk into the armor because if they weren't countersunk, the weapon would actually come around and hit them when it swings. So yeah, everything's really tight and I was really worried about this whole aspect of it, but it ended up being okay. And these outside screws actually screw directly into the UHMW block, which is kind of nice. So now that that's all together, it's time to slap on the spacer. And this is basically like a draw bar. It's a um, long bolt that actually goes through the whole assembly. The screws I'm putting in right now just hold the weapon directly to the hub, but the draw bar actually goes through the entire assembly and compresses the whole thing together. And then from the other side, I just need to drop in the tapered roller bearing, a um, washer basically as a spacer, and then I put on a single nut and that holds everything in place. And you can see I'm kind of filling with the tension right here, making sure it's too you know, tight enough, but not too tight. And once I get that to the right tightness, then I use another nut on top of that and then basically um, tighten those against each other. And there's no thread locker here. Actually, it's just the counter rotation of the two nuts against each other that holds everything together. And the last and final step is just to put on the top armor plate. Um, I didn't really you know, fully put that on because I got to do all the electrical, but that is the full assembly for crippling depression. Thanks for watching.